Well, g'day guys. Uh, here we are again uh, in Mr. H's home for devotions. Uh, thankfully, for the rest of this week, you guys have been able to have devotions with your teacher and core teacher to be able to pray and to talk to God and to read some Bible, which is so good. So just once a week, uh, you'll come back to, into my place here, which uh, is, as you may notice, a new room. So previously, I was in a room that is now being converted in, back into a bedroom, so I had to clean up my study. So here it is. Let me get, give you a quick whirlwind tour. Here we go. One, two, three. Whoa! Whoa. Hopefully no, no one's too seasick. As you can see, I have set up the important things, my Nerf guns and my remote control stuff, some other toys there as well. Uh, but I just wonder whether your reaction to going back into lockdown was anything like mine. Like... No! Or maybe you are asking important questions like, why? 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 Or maybe you're asking, wait, so how many people are allowed to exercise together and do they have to be from the same household and do we have to wear a mask? So that last question wasn't too hard to find. I went online, found out. Uh, in answer to your question, sir, uh, two people are allowed to exercise together. They don't have to be members of the same household or wear masks outside as long as it's within 10 kilometers of their home. That's today. Could change tomorrow. But the other question is a little bit more difficult to answer. Why? Now, I don't know if you realize this, uh, but this question is one of the biggest ones you'll ever ask as a Christian. And it's been asked for thousands upon thousands of years. And the question is this. What do we as Christians do with all this suffering that is in the world? Because non-Christians will look at us and say, either your God is not powerful enough to stop the suffering, or he is powerful enough, but he doesn't, in which case he's not loving, he's not good. And this is the question that I'm going to be looking at today, because the Bible does speak to this, make no mistake. So, if you think about it, suffering can come from all sorts of places in this world, okay? So it could come from natural disasters like earthquakes or tsunamis, it could come from loneliness, disease, poverty, death. You might be suffering right now, school at home. I mean, you might be bored. You might have too much energy to be able to study. You might be hungry. Mom, I'm hungry! Mom, I'm hungry! And if you haven't played Minecraft or watched YouTube in the last 10 minutes, you might be looking like this. Minecraft? 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 YouTube. YouTube, my God! And of course, it's not just limited to coronavirus either, because everyone in this world will experience different levels of pain, hardship, and suffering through their lives. And this suffering could take many forms. It could be, it could take the form of loneliness. It could be sadness of losing someone that's dear to us. It could be losing a pet, or serious illness, or difficulties in relationships or even mental health issues like anxiety or depression. And so, like I said, as Christians, the question comes up, why? How can you let these things happen to us, God? So in a second, I'm going to read from the Bible. But firstly, I would like to work out just how much you already know about God. And that is going to come in the form of a quiz. Uh, yes, thank you very much there, Mr. H. Uh, this is Mr. H again, just with a hat and a tie, um, but this is what I need to be the quiz master. All right, so quiz master H. Two first, first two questions. First one, these are a little bit easier, okay? So I want you guys, this is gonna ease you into it a little bit. The first question is, as far as you understand from God, is God powerful? Is God powerful? All right, a couple seconds to answer that one. Is yes or no, three, two, one. Of course, yes, yes is the answer. He is powerful. Good work. All right. Nice start. You're doing well. All right. Question two. Is God good? Is the next question. Yes or no? Three, two, 
Yes, oh, of course he's good. God is good and God is all powerful. Now, like I say, they are just some gimmies for the moment. I know you guys knew that. These ones are gonna get a little bit more difficult. So, five more questions. Question number one, I wanna count what, you, I want you to count how you go, okay? If you get a few wrong, just, that's all right, just let me know. Question one is this. Can we somehow live a life in this world where we never suffer? Can we somehow live in this world and never suffer? All right, Whoa. three, two. The answer of course is no, we cannot live in a world without suffering. It's part of where we're at. In fact, Jesus even says in John 16, he says, in this world, you will have trouble. All right, that's question one, good. Okay, question two. Are we allowed to cry out to God if we're going through suffering? Okay, so are we allowed to cry out to Him when we're going through suffering? Think about that. Three seconds. And the answer is yes, yes, of course we can. In fact, David, all through the Psalms, cries out to God when he's suffering, when he's in pain, when he's sad, when he's scared, when he's, uh, yep, he always cries out. So that's good. Yes, you may cry out to God. Question three. Is God doing the wrong thing when he lets us suffer? Oh, it's a bit more tricky. Is God doing the wrong thing when he allows us to go through suffering? Three, choose which one, yes or no? The answer is no. God is not doing the wrong thing. In fact, this is actually really hard, but it's really important. We can always trust that God is doing the right thing, even when things are hard for us. Okay, we can always do that, good. All right, uh, question four. Does God know what it means to suffer? Question four, what does he know? Does he know what it means to suffer? Three, two, yes, of course he does. Yes, Jesus died on the cross. He suffered on earth. He was betrayed. He was whipped. Uh, he was alone on that cross. Yes, he knows how to suffer. He knows what it is. All right, I wonder how you're going. Last question here, question five. Is will we ever be free of suffering? Think about that one. Will we ever be free of suffering? Three, two. The answer is, of course, yes. We will always suffer on this on this earth, but of course, when we are, in, are with our God in heaven, there will be no more suffering. He promises. What a what a great thing! All right. So uh, I wonder how you went out of five. Um, if you did get some wrong, by the way. Uh, and you got any questions about them, let me know. Otherwise, back to me in the studio. Well, how did you go out of five? If you did get one or two wrong, don't worry. Um, I'd love to answer your questions. If you have questions about those, send them my way via email and I would love to chat to you about them. But in the meantime, now that we know those truths about God, we can get back to our original question, which was, why do we have to suffer? And the answer, and this is coming straight from the Bible, is sometimes we will know why we're suffering, but usually we won't. So, the best story to help us with this comes from the Old Testament book of Job. Now, you can read the first couple of chapters after this, it's great. But basically, to summarize, Job suffers really, really hard, right? And for about 35 chapters, he's asking the question, why? And then finally, in verse 38, God answers him. And the best way that I can summarize that answer to you is by taking you for a trip around my house. So, come with me. Oh, P.S. I should definitely show you my, uh, Miss Dr. Liggins has lent me her social media influencer kit, which she had because I've put my other stuff somewhere. I just don't know where it is, I can't find it. So thank you, Dr. Liggins, because it means I can do my videos. Now, just a little thing you need to know about my wife. She likes to collect things, lots of things. But one thing in particular she likes to collect is puzzles. So, oh, there her DVD collection, some CDs, and puzzles. Now, if I was to take one of these puzzles, let's pick this one, and I was to show you this. I want you to imagine that your life is like a puzzle. And if I was just to show you this one piece, it's not going to make sense. You're not going to know where it fits and you definitely won't be able to guess what the whole picture is or see the whole picture. Back to me in the studio. Thanks for that, me. So, just like Job, 
was only seeing one little part of the puzzle of the big picture, God reminds him that he knows the whole picture. And only God knows that. Now, I want you to think of this little puzzle piece as just one of the many, many pieces that make up the big picture of your life. Now I want you to think how frustrating it is when you don't have all the pieces in a puzzle. How annoying. Every single moment, every single piece is important. But none of these moments will last forever. Now, I'm going to read to you one of my favorite Bible verses. Uh, this is a verse that got me through probably one of the hardest times in my life. Um, so I'm going to share it, to, share it with you now. It comes from Romans chapter 5, and it's verses 3 to 5, and it goes like this. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. So what this passage is saying, is that God uses the hardest parts in our lives to mold us and shape us into the person that he wants us to be. And so what that means is that our suffering is never pointless and never meaningless. He will use it. But sometimes it can, sometimes it can be really, really painful. God will allow hard things to happen in your life, just like he'll allow lots and lots of great things to happen in your life. Uh, that's all just part of living in God's world. But the important thing is this, that when hard things do happen, that we don't just jump to conclusions like, or thoughts like, uh, he doesn't love us, or he doesn't care, or he's not there, because we know that's not true. Instead, I want you to do two things, okay? The, the two things, talk to him and turn to him. First thing, talk to him. Pray, pray to your great God. And remember that when David prays, he cries out in anguish and sorrow sometimes. So that's okay. The second thing is turn to him. Remember and trust that God is in control. Turn to God and know that He will always be there, even in the darkest times. Psalm 23 verse 4 uh, says it really well and says this, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, he quotes Joshua 1 5 and he says this, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. What an amazing promise. So hopefully you can see that God is with us in our suffering. So what are the two things to remember? Talk to Him and turn to Him. Awesome. Okay, God is there and He loves us. And remember that God has suffered too. He and His Son know what it's like. And Jesus suffered on that cross so that one day, after we've, enjoyed, we've gone through all the hard parts and we've enjoyed all the good parts of our lives, that we will be with our great God forever. And we'll never need to think about pain or sadness or COVID ever again. So guys, in life, there will be pain. In fact, I know for a fact that there are many in our community right now who are suffering terribly. And please know that I'm praying for you if you've let me know these things. And if you do have prayer points and if you are suffering through stuff, please just send me an email. I would love to pray for you every single day through this COVID pandemic. So that's the first thing is talk to him. But remember, the second thing we need to do is to turn to him. Because if there's one thing that suffering can always do, it can always help us to trust in God more. It can always help us to understand him and how he works for the good of those who love him. Guys, suffering will always be there but it's just a little piece. Okay? It won't last. It'll be there in this life until heaven. But remember, it's just a little piece. And God is using this suffering as He molds you and changes you into the person He wants you to be, as He molds and changes you to be more like Jesus. The last thing I want to remind you guys is that God has placed people in your lives to help you when you're struggling. So, for example, your parents, your carers, your teachers, myself, we all really, really care and we want to know if you're struggling. So, find an adult you can trust and tell them, talk to them about that. The second thing is a bit more practical. I know that when I'm really struggling, I love listening to music, especially Christian music. Worship music for me is awesome. Just to kind of clear my head and bring me back to God is really, really helpful. So, if you are into or any kind of genre, nowadays Spotify's got heaps of playlists. Come talk to me, um, send me an email, whatever, and I can point you in the right direction. Uh, 
the other thing is books, Christian books. So I know that there's, I've got, I've got a bunch that I can lend or give out, obviously when COVID uh, ends, but come and talk to me again if you want, if you're keen for a, a read, there's some really good Christian books out there too. And lastly, well, some practical things as well is things like exercise, making sure you get heaps, plenty of exercise, uh, you're sleeping well, no devices before bed, uh, all those things really help, help too, um, to, to if, if you are struggling or if things are difficult. Uh, and the last thing is um, church or youth group, okay? So it's really, really important, or a Bible study. It's really important if you do have other Christian friends or uh, Christian leaders that you can talk to and, and, and share stuff with, um, or even just being around other Christians can be really, really uplifting. Um, and so even, I'm sure your youth groups are doing stuff on Zoom now, so make sure you don't forget that. Join a Bible study on Zoom. Um, spend that time with other Christians. Uh, and of course, prayer. We need to pray. We need to talk to our great God, as I said, uh, and so, won't you pray with me now? Oops. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you uh, that even though we struggle, even though we suffer, even though there's really, really hard times in our life, that you are there, um, that you're walking with us, and that you will use that to change us into the people you want us to be. But Lord, when we're really struggling, when we're really suffering, um, help us to talk to you and to turn to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, last, last thing. Okay, I got given a book of dad jokes. So I'm just going to share one with you. Just random. Here we go. All right. Where do plants invest their money? In the stalk market. All right, that's me. I'm out. See you guys soon.